Hey everyone, it's Rhiannon here and I'm here to talk to you about another excellent book. So today I actually want to talk about an entire series, a YA mystery trilogy, and that is going to be the Truly Devious trilogy by Maureen Johnson. So the first one is Truly Devious, then The Vanishing Stair, and then The Hand on the Wall. It's perfect for fans of true crime, for detective stories, and the third one has only just come out, The Hand on the Wall. I'm so happy that it's out because now I have all of the answers because let me tell you, waiting for all of these books to come out was like a form of torture because Johnson sets up all these like intriguing threads and then the book just ends and then you don't have anything to do except just like frantically theorise about it until the next one comes out. So you are all actually very lucky that the entire series is out and you could just binge it. Uh, because this is a series that deserves to be binged and then binged again and then binged again because there are so many little like easter eggs and breadcrumbs that you don't realise while you're reading it for the first time but then once you know what's going to happen and who did what you read it and you like feel so stupid because the thing was in front of your face the entire time. So the premise of the series is that in the 1930s there was a very rich man called Albert Ellingham who had set up a school for the best and brightest children he could find and it was in these remote mountains in America. But then in 1936, his wife Iris and his child Alice are kidnapped and the only thing they find is this threatening note signed by someone calling themselves truly devious. And he never finds his wife or child and the case remains a mystery. So cut to the present day and our main character is a young girl named Stevie Bell who has been obsessed with the Ellingham case and she decides to apply for Ellingham School, which is still open. And the way you apply for the school is you just write an essay on something that you're very passionate about so she writes an essay saying she thinks she can solve the Ellingham case and she gets accepted so the books follow her going to the school and also trying to solve the case but then you also get snippets from scenes in the 1930s so you slowly get more and more information about the Ellinghams and about what was going on but also while Stevie is investigating this cold case in the past some very strange things start to happen to her in the present and people start going missing and she starts getting threatening notes so it kind of all ties together and you get the sense that maybe this case isn't over or somehow both of them are connected. That's all I'm going to say in terms of the summary because I don't want to spoil any part of this series because one of the great joys in reading it is like the mysteries. Maureen Johnson is such a good mystery writer. She knows exactly when to reveal things and when to hold them back and like give you just enough to try and work it out. I think one of my favourite things about this book series is Maureen Johnson's writing style. She has a very sardonic witty tone so even when some quite dark things are happening there's always this element of uh, humour running through it. Um, it kind of actually reminds me of weirdly Derek Landy's writing style. I don't know if you've read Skardoggery Pleasant but if those two ever decided to write books together I think, I think it'd be pretty funny. Another subplot running through the book is Stevie feels very isolated from her parents because they are big fans of this American senator who's kind of loosely Trump-ish and you know very 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 strong Republican and Stevie isn't at all and has constantly fought with her parents over this and you kind of get the sense that going to Ellingham is a real source of refuge for her because she's finally surrounded by people who like actually listen to her and won't dismiss her and have the same beliefs as her. But it's handled really well, you don't get the sense that her parents are evil, like they still love her a lot. And that's one of the ideas that Stevie grapples with, the idea that her parents can love her so much but that they're just fundamentally different in their views and how they see the world. You can tell from reading this book that Maureen Johnson is a very big true crime fan. Uh, she name drops a lot of podcasts that if you were also a true crime fan like me you will recognise. But she's very good at kind of showing both sides of an obsession with crime because you know, there are people who think that it's a morbid fascination and that people who like true crime are just obsessed with the story and forget to think about the actual human implications of murder and what it means if someone is a victim. But Johnson handles this all very, very well and, you know, has a few characters who kind of accuse Stevie of being inhuman or not thinking about the human cost. And at certain points, Stevie kind of gets overwhelmed by, you know, considering the fact that she's talking about real people and investigating human lives. And I thought it was just handled very, very well, especially because true crime had this huge surge of popularity in the recent years. Now there are a lot more critics of it and critics of the fans of it. And Johnson doesn't blindly say that loving true crime is a totally unproblematic thing. Um, she's very open in admitting that it is a slightly darker thing to be obsessed with, but I think the way she explains Stevie's obsession with it is actually very compassionate and makes sense for Stevie as a character, but also 
makes it very clear why someone would become interested in old murders and solving old crimes. I would recommend this series for fans of true crime, like I said, or um, Karen McManus's books like One of Us is Lying um, or Holly Jackson, Good Girl's Guide to Murder. I think this trilogy is incredibly gripping and very well plotted and the ending is extremely satisfying. I was so worried the ending wasn't going to be satisfying but I shouldn't, I shouldn't have worried at all because Johnson executed it perfectly. Thanks for watching everybody, I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you go and pick up the Truly Devious trilogy, you won't regret it. See you next time!